Hey, real quick before we start this video, if you guys want to see more behind-the-scenes footage of my podcast shoot with Dope as Yola, follow me on Instagram at TheGBLN, linked at the very top of the description, or just enter the at on the screen right now. Hey, we got behind-the-scenes pictures, clips coming this weekend, everything, dude. It's a hype episode. Let's dive right into the video. Follow me right fucking now, dude. I'm not playing. Alright, I'm sorry, I love you guys. Alright, let's get into the video. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy, Goblin, and today, we're coming in with an absolute hoot and a holler. Just one of the biggest bangers we've uploaded in a long time. I'm really excited to tell this story. Uh, this is the story of how I just went to LA. I literally just got back yesterday. We're posting this today. The podcast with Dope is Yola is filmed and it drops on Monday. So I'm going to have his socials linked in the description. Go follow his podcast channel. Be ready to watch that on Monday. I'm super excited. We're going to talk a little more about that later into the video. But also, another thing I want to mention real quick is the new merch drop is live, boys. It has been selling like hotcakes. This is the best-selling merch drop we've ever had. We got blotter blankets, blotter art mouse pads. We got hoodies in new colors like pink, which looks amazing with the blotter design. We got t-shirts. We got all sorts of new items that have never been in merch drops before. Check the link in the description. And if you guys do end up purchasing some merch, tweet a receipt at me or DM it to me on, on Instagram or something. Let me show you some love back. I appreciate all you guys for the support. Thank you for making the merch drop possible. It's really awesome stuff. And also... In this video, I'm going to show you guys a couple, like, you know, behind-the-scenes pictures that we took, you know? Uh, just a couple pictures of us booing, which you could see in the thumbnail as well. I'm not going to show any, like, video footage, A, because he actually hasn't sent me that yet. He's still got to get that edited, and then he's going to send me, like, some, some promo stuff so I can gas it up, too. But also, I don't, I don't want to release too much of the episode before it's out. But, in today's video, we're talking about my trip to Los Angeles, which was a very brief one. Unfortunately, due to due to personal court-related circumstances, I was only able to stay in LA for 12 hours. So I literally, I flew in on June 22nd, two days ago. I landed at 5.30 p.m., right, at LAX. And I was sober as can be, okay? My sole reason for coming to LA was just to film this podcast. I didn't have time to do anything else. And Yola hits me up like the day of my flight or the day before. And he shoots me a text with a picture of just an ungodly amount of THC laid out. And he's like, yo, dude, don't worry about having to stop at a dispo. I got you. Don't worry about it. So I'm like, yeah, let me know how much I owe you. You know, like that's a lot of shit. And he's like, bro. Don't even worry about it. Big shout out to Yola, dude. The the, the best, most hospitable guy. I, I, granted, I've never collabed with any other YouTubers, but for real, I really appreciate all he did for me. Cool ass fucking dude. And this video, this, this podcast is going to bang. We recorded for like damn near four hours. But back on topic. So I get to LA, you know, and I... LAX is a nightmare, and I'm dead sober at this point, right? I'm not really baked, baked anymore, you know? At the airport waiting for my flight out to LA, I was pretty fucked up, I'll admit. I might have put some, uh, some, uh, some snow powder, you know, I might have gone skiing before, but that's irrelevant, and you come down from that quick. So by the time I landed at LAX, I was just not having a good time. And I didn't bring anything with me, because I was only staying in LA for a day, right? So I landed LAX, and listen, I haven't been to LA in a long time, right? They have some fucked up ass sh system at LA where you can't just get picked up by an Uber, like, at the terminal. You have to take a shuttle over to the rideshare area and then get picked up. So I, I don't understand this, and I'm on Uber, and I'm fucking, I'm hitting, I'm telling my driver, like, my G, I'm at, you know, Terminal 4. And he's like, dude, you gotta take a shuttle, we can't pick you up, and I'm like, bro, what shuttle? Like... Like, where, dude? I'm walking all up and down LA. I'm like, bro, like, where? Finally, I see the shuttle that just says, you know, it's got, like, the little Uber logo on the side and all that. And I'm like, all right, okay, I get it now. So I hop on the shuttle. I ride on over. I get picked up by homie. I think his name was Ming Ming or something, I'm pretty sure. I, that literally was his name. Let me look. His name was Ming Ming. And it, was, it made it really challenging because there was, like, a clear language barrier. Like, I got in, and I was like, oh, how's your day, man? You know, like... Like, trying to start a conversation with the guy. And he just, he was very quiet. So, I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I guess, I, it was still a good ride. I tipped him well. It was a good ride. Let me look. I'm literally pulling up my Uber app right now. I'm literally, I'm pulling it up right now. Hold on. Um, hold on. 
hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Ming Ming. Big ups to the dude. Big ups to the dude. That's all I'm going to say. Big ups to the dude. He, listen, good man. Good man. I tipped him well. But either way, back on topic here. So, we we had a clear language barrier. And I was, like, trying to talk to this guy about, like, weed and stuff. Because he asked me, like, he asked me what I do for a living. So, I was trying to explain why I was out in L.A. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to record this podcast kind of thing. And he just did not compute it. So, the ride got very quiet. And the ride from LAX to my hotel was, like, an hour long, right? So... We take that little ride, you know, we're cruising, and it's not like it's far away either. It's literally like a 10-mile, you know, distance-wise thing. But L.A. is ridiculous with traffic. My Uber for that distance was like $100. It, it was like 110 I'm pretty sure. Insanity. So expensive, right? Ridiculous. But finally, I make it to my hotel. At this point, it's already like 7.30 p.m., and I text Yola, and I'm like, yo, dude, we, we plan to film, you know, me getting there around 7.30 to 8, and I was like, yo, dude, listen, I just got to my hotel, so it's gonna be like, is it is it cool if I slide closer to like 8.30 or some shit like that? And he's like, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. So I immediately get my shower going, call room service, and I order a bottle of rosé. I'm like, dude... I'm sober as can be. I got to slam this bottle and go film this podcast, you know? Because listen, I'll admit, at first I was a little nervous, right? Like I've never done something like this. I've never really done a a collab with any other content creators, let alone something of this scale, you know, where they got the the whole studio set up and all that. I was sitting there and I, I was feeling like I was about to go on Fox News, dude. I, I was feeling like I was about to get interviewed by like Tucker Carlson or some shit. I was like, what the dude, like what, like what's going on here? You know, I had no idea what to expect. So I go and I, I get my bottle of rosé right after I get out of the shower. Room service came and I'm chilling in the room drinking a nice glass of rosé. And I realize a little too much time had passed. So I just slammed the whole bottle being the alcoholic I am. And I call my Uber. Now, I'd already known that Yola had some goodies for me waiting because he texted me that. So I emptied out my backpack and literally just brought an empty bag with a phone charger. And that's it. My wallet, phone charger, that's all I came with. And I slid directly to the Push Trees Warehouse, which is a cool spot. It's a ni- it's really nice in there, actually. He's got a dope fucking setup, right? But either way, I pull up and I call him at first because I don't see him. And I look over and Yola's out there, like, flagging me down. I'm like, oh, shit, dude. The man himself, there he is. You know, like, it didn't feel like we were really doing this until I was actually at the warehouse. And I was like, okay, it's time, boys, right? So I, I, you know, I hop out my Uber and on the way there, my Uber driver was a madman, dude. This guy was whipping and he was telling me how he bought DMT earlier today. He was like, oh yeah, dude. he was asking me like why I was out in LA, you know, which I mean, pretty much every Uber driver asks you that when you get in their car and you're not from LA you know, or if they pick you up from a hotel or something like that. So I was explaining to him, he's like, oh yeah, dude, I just fucking got some DMT earlier. And I was like, bro. I got to get your phone number for next time I'm in LA. Like, you seem like the kind of guy who can help me, you know? And he's like, yeah, dude, for sure. So Uber driver was cool as hell. Got him locked in. I hop out. I go over to Yola. Dad, mom, I'm like, my man, it is a pleasure to meet you. I was excited, right? He, he kind of gives me a little tour of his setup in the whole warehouse, which for those of you guys who watch Dope as Yola, you, you've probably seen that. For those of you guys who, I feel like I should have explained this sooner. For Some of you guys might have no clue who I'm talking about here. He's a weed content creator. I just assume most of you know who I'm talking about because he has like quadruple my sub count. So I, I'd imagine you probably know who I'm talking about here. But if not, he's linked in the description either way. Go show him some love. He was, he was a very great host and he gave me a very great experience in LA. But either way, so we got a little tour of the podcast. He's got his producer, Marty, who's a cool ass guy. And it's just us three up in the warehouse chilling, right? After he shows me around a little bit, he kind of explains the mic setup and the podcast setup and all that. It gives me the rundown on what to do. And I went into this not knowing at all what the questions were, right? Which makes it better. I mean, obviously, I don't want to sit there and do prep. It's, It's better when it's like rapid fire. But as we sat down at the table and we were getting ready to record, we just started talking. And we weren't even filming yet. And we were just chatting about random ass shit. And we had to stop ourselves and be like, wait, this all needs to be on camera. Because I'm sitting there talking to him about, like, my meth head old neighbors and all this shit. And he's like, wait, dude, no, time out. This has got to be on camera. Like, we got to get this on the podcast. So then we started filming. Now, this is where the fun comes in. I still hadn't smoked at this point, right? 
I was sober as could be. And this man to the left. So, all right, there's a big like wooden, you'll, you guys will see in the episode, there's a big wood table and he's got our, our microphone set up. He actually uses the same mic that I'm using to record this right now. So, uh, coincidence, cool stuff. Either way. So he had this little table that was like, you, I don't really think you can see it like from the camera angles he had set up where it was just a bunch of fucking joints and a lighter and an ashtray and a couple bottles of water, just the loadout. And I look over to the table and he tells me, he's like, yeah, listen, spark up whenever you're ready. You know, he's like, just, just get it going. Right. So I spark up this first joint and he sparks up with me and we're having our conversation and I'm not going to talk about what our discussion was because that's for the podcast. You guys can watch that. I'm not going to sit here and, and spoil the whole thing. But what I will say is it like it, genuinely, I forgot we were recording half the time. We were so stoned and we got into so many different topics that were very interesting. And then we busted out the bottle, right? He pulls out this really nice, it was like Mandalay something, I don't know, really nice, super fancy bottle of tequila. And we start taking shots. And after the shots came in, I was already a joint deep. And I was faded. I was cooked out of my mind. I don't know what it is about the weed. I mean, obviously, Yola's got the good shit. He's got the connections. But, like, I, oh, my God, dude. I smoked one joint because I hadn't taken a dab since, like, 8 a.m. that morning. And I was off my rocker stoned, dude. So he finishes the first joint. We're, we're chatting a little more. We spark up some more, and we're getting baked and we just filmed the rest of the podcast now i'm not going to get into too much detail about the podcast or the format all i'm going to say is it's a super fucking awesome episode basically like think of things that i wouldn't normally say on this channel or things that i wouldn't talk about on this channel uh during a smoke sesh kind of format like for those of you guys who have never seen his content really like this is some shit you guys are going to want to go watch it's dope right but either way uh back on topic here so after we finished filming, after, like, it was a good three and a half, four hours, dude. We weren't done until after midnight. I got there at, like, 8.30, and we were not done until, like, closer to 1 in the morning by the time I got my Uber, right? It, it was late, dude. Like, midnight, 1 in the morning. We were filming hard, right? We were going crazy. So after we got our filming done, he brings out this goodie bag, right? Which, which had all my THC content in it. But then, hey, I gotta give a huge shout-out to Yola for, for real hooking me up like this. After that... Yeah, he's like, what size shirt do you wear? And I, I figured he was just going to throw... He was showing me this one, like, Halo shirt that he had, this Chiefin shirt. And I, I played Halo a lot when I was young. So I was like, yo, dude, that's fucking dope. Like, I'll, like, if you're offering a shirt, hell yeah, dude. I'll take... That's dope. I'll rock that for sure, right? This man takes a cardboard box and takes two boxes of, like, palm... Like, I don't remember what they were called. I had, like, OGG or something? I don't know, dude. These tobacco-free, like, really nice hemp wraps, right? Puts them in this giant cardboard box. And then I, I don't even know how many shirts this man grabbed. It was, like, every shirt in existence in this guy's warehouse. And just stuffed them in the box and taped it up for me to bring home, right? I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm like, dude, like... I gotta pay for this. Like I like I can't accept all this. This guy gave me two rolling trays. His homie from the dispo hooked me up with all that wheat. Like, dude, I felt guilty. I kept saying I was I was saying I was like, dude, like I gotta pay for this shit, dude. Like like this is crazy. I've never I've never had such like generosity. You know, like for real. Like what a real dude. You know, like what a fucking real one. So I'm sitting there, and I'm I'm like flabbergasted at this point. I'm like, holy shit, right? But then the games are just beginning, okay? After all that's done, you know, we chill outside, wait for my Uber. I dap them up, you know, and listen, I'm going back in August, by the way. This is not the last time you will see myself and Yola together. I'm going back in August. Hopefully linking up with Eric, too. We'll see how that goes. Because uh, he, he DM'd me right after I left LA. It was such terrible timing that I was only able to stay for like 12 hours. But we'll get to that. So, either way. After I left the warehouse, I go back to my hotel and realize that I can bring a lot of this stuff back with me, but I can't bring all of it. So it's time to get really fucking stoned. So I had in this care package it gave me, it gave me an eight to, I don't even remember the strain. All I remember was the company was called Exotic Genetics. Shout out to them because this shit smoked. I took some of those wraps he gave me and I stuffed them. They were these cones. They were super easy to use. I, st I think they were like King Paul. I don't know. I, they might have been King. I don't know, dude. I was high all evening, dude. I was blasted out of my mind, which by the pictures I've posted, you guys could probably tell. I threw them up earlier in the video. And also, 
if you guys check on my Instagram and my Twitter, you'll see those pictures, right? But either way, I get back to the hotel and I'm blasted out of my mind. I'm absolutely sent. He's, he's, he gave me like four pre-rolls, right? Two of them were infused with wax and hash. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at these and I'm like, oh God. And then the other two were just regular pre-rolls that are fat as fuck, dude. They're like a gram and a half, two grams, like nice, nice, fat pre-rolls. So I'm like, dude, I le- like I have to get an Uber for my flight in approximately five and a half hours. By the time I got back to my hotel, it was like one in the morning. I flew out at 9 a.m. that day, right? I literally spent 14 hours in Los Angeles. So I was on a mission. I took that eighth and I took that loose pack of wraps I had outside. Because he, he thought I had. He gave me a couple of loose packs outside of the box to go smoke back at the hotel. I was like, dude, you're a thinker. I appreciate it, right? So I get back there. I immediately get to business, dude. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm trying my hardest, dude, grinding this shit up. But I realized I didn't have a grinder. So I'm hand grinding this shit. But it's so fucking sticky, dude. I'm trying my hardest. But hey. I'm a vet. I've I've gone through the hand grinding the sticky before, so it was no problem. So I'm stuffing these palms, and I smoke some fat fucking oh, oh. I'm telling you right now, I don't know what it. Uh, you know, I don't consider myself the the Godfather expert of marijuana, but with Cali weed, I really think it's the terps that hit different. Sure, you could get high percentage weed here in Illinois too, but. The thing is, the quantity that I had to smoke out there to get as high as I was was just not the same as even the shit I get with my med card out here. Like, I have a, you know, I have a buddy who, I smoked some shit from a grower from one of the companies out here, an ex-grower. He was like the the lead flower guy, and he grows his own, like, hybrids and, and breeds his own strains. And that shit still barely smokes like this, bro. Like, the shit out there had me on my rocker. So I sparked this fucking nice little stuffed up palm and I'm chilling on the balcony of my hotel room and I'm having a hoot, dude. I'm having a blast. I sparked that and I realized it's time to do my cush ups, dude. I have no excuses. I can't bring this eighth home. Like bare minimum, this eighth and at least like two of these pre-rolls are getting smoked. The rest I could probably bring with me in my carry on, right? So I smoke a few joints, right? Get through the first one blazed out of my mind. And by the end, Oh, God. Oh, <coughs> water break. Oh, hey, drink break. Hey. Shout out liquid, dude. That just changed my life. Okay, hey, back on topic here. So I get back to my hotel and I'm smoking the fuck out of these shits. I get through the first joint. And by the time I got back to the hotel, I was already still faded from recording the podcast. Blasted out of my mind. But I, I was not, the mission was, it, it, it was just getting started. So I smoke two more joints out on the balcony, and I'm living good. I'm feeling so baked. And I go back in my hotel, and I was about to eat the edibles, but I was like, wait, I should save these until the morning right before my flight, right? So I'm sitting there. And I'm trying to debate on what I can bring back and what I can't. He even gave me some carts, which normally you guys know I'm not a cart guy. But hey, if it's free and it's from a dispo with testing labels and everything and it's from Cali, count me in, dude. Absolutely. I was even ripping the carts. And I was, listen, well, ripping the carts now that I got home. And they're nice. They're nice. I'm telling you right now, they're nice. But either way. I'm sitting there trying to evaluate what I can bring with me and what might be a little too risky because I had court the next day, so I had to be back home, right? Like, I I was not taking any risks. And also, what am I going to do? Say no to smoking an accident? Like, oh, no, there's a bunch of weed in front of me and I have to smoke it in six hours. What what am I going to say? No? Like, hell fucking yeah, dude. So I'm chief, and after I get through this King Palm, I smoke another fucking, I I spark up one of these pre-rolls. And it was the wax-infused one. Holy mother of God. Dear sweet baby Jesus is all I can say. These burnt so slowly and they hit so hard. I remember I ran out of all the water bottles that were like complimentary in my fridge in my room. And I had to go start filling them up with tap water because I was losing lung space, dude. It was getting crazy out there smoking this shit. 
I'm out on the balcony, blasted off my mind, dude. I'm going crazy. And some guy comes out on the balcony below me at like two in the morning and he's on the same shit. You know, when you can look at someone and just tell by the way they're dressed, like, yeah, dude, this guy's in LA for the same reason as me. He was, he comes out and he smells, he's like, God damn, he smells my shit. He's like, shit. And I'm like, he, he's below me, right? So I can see him. So I'm looking down and we're chatting a little bit and I'm like, hey, dude. He's like, oh, shit, man, you're smoking some good shit. We're chatting a little bit about what we're smoking on, you know, just just vibing out, having a good time in L.A. And I was having a blast, you know. I was just having a good time. I was asking him how long he's here, you know. He, he told me he was just spending a few days out there. I was like, oh, shit, man, I, I'll leave tomorrow. And he's like, damn, man, like, that sucks, you know. And I was like, yeah, you know, just, just kind of chatting it up with the dude a little bit, right? So after I, sm- I smoked that last wax and hash one, I was like on the I was on the faint I was on the verge of fainting, dude. I could barely function. So I went and laid in my room. And I don't know how this happened because I didn't have any alarm set. But like by the power of God, I saw, I passed out. I literally fell asleep for like 2 hours and I woke back up. Not to, it was like an hour and a half. I woke back up, no alarm or anything. I just randomly woke back up like an hour and a half later at like 4:30 in the morning. And I was—I looked at it because I tweaked. When I first woke up, I was freaking out. I was like, no, no, dude, I missed my flight. Like, no, bro, no fucking way. Like, this can't be happening right now. I woke up, checked the clock. I was like, oh, shit, dude. It's time to get back to my cush-ups, right? So I go back out on the balcony an hour and a half later. It's damn near 5 in the morning now. And I spark up one of the regular pre-rolls, not the wax and hash infused ones. And it was nice. He had a sativa one in there that was a nice little wake and bake, like... It was some for real sativa. That shit had me nice, dude. I don't remember the strains of half of these shits because I was fucking baked, dude. But I'll tell you right now, spectacular. If you guys go on my Twitter and my Instagram, you can see the pictures I posted of all the shit we were smoking. It, It was a blast, dude. It was a blast out there, right? So... I smoke what I can, and the, by the time, you know, I'm done smoking that joint and chilling for a little bit, kind of enjoying the morning balcony breeze, I realized that I got to get an Uber out of my hotel by, like, 6.30, because L.A. traffic is about to fuck me if I don't, right? So I, I go hop in the shower, I get ready, I start packing all my shit up, and I'm trying to get creative with how to conceal my goodies, you know? I'm like, okay, I know LAX doesn't care that much, but also, like... Still, you you can't just have a fucking pocket full of, like, dispo containers, you know? Like, you have to at least put some slight thought into it, you know? Like, like I can't just literally carry on a backpack full of weed and, like, two sweatshirts, you know? So I'm, I'm being a little strategic. I get my goodies packed with the secret or ancient old goblin method, which, uh, if I share the TSA, hey, all I'm gonna say is be an innovator. Think hard, and you can do it, all right? But either way, so I get my goodies through with the ancient old goblin TSA method. I didn't bring much back. I brought both of my carts and I got a little pre-roll and that's about it. And man, let me tell you right now. I'm so glad that I smoked as much as I did while I was there. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments like, oh, you should have brought it all back. Oh, you should have tried. Oh, they didn't care. No, dude. That I, the the level of stoned I was for the entire like 12 hours I was in L.A., was absolutely absurd, right? Oh my god, I just burped, pardon me. But after I packed up all my shit, I left all my edibles in like this top pocket on my backpack, and I opened the bags in advance. And while I was in the backseat of the Uber, I was just smacking on every edible I fucking had, dude. I, I lined them all up. He gave me these things called liquid joints. I was t- I was drinking the fuck out of those. He had a um, like a fruity pebble rice crispy treat. He gave me like this this brownie peanut butter thing. There was a lot of edibles in there, dude. There was a lot. So I was feeling good at the airport, dude. I was feeling great. I hopped on that plane, and I hopped on that plane, but I hopped onto my terminal. You know, I'm waiting for the plane, and I was baked out of my mind, dude. I was sad I had to go home, but at the same time, honestly, the podcast went so much better than I could have ever expected. If there's ever some some collab content that you guys should be excited for, it's honestly this shit, dude. So big thank you once again to Dope as Yola for having me out in LA. I had an absolute blast, and I'll see you again in August, my dude. Uh, I like like locked. I'm going back in August, dude, and I'm spending more time this time. It's gonna be a hoot, but either way, 
Thank you all for watching this video. I appreciate all the love, all the comments, all the subscriptions. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.